What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are now in our third week of January and today, man, third week of January. Isn't it crazy how quick time is going? feels like uh, we just celebrated Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then New Year's. It's just it's insane how fast time goes sometimes. So today I am doing a kind of a, a different event. I'm doing a super sweet 16. Um, I actually do quite a bit of Sweet 16s and young adult events throughout the year. So like grad parties, uh, school events, school dances, proms, uh, Super Sweet 16s, quinceaneras, things like that. And I'm going to be creating a video soon that talks about um, some of the things that you as a DJ need to understand and realize and, and how to do when you are booked for the young adult types of events like Sweet Sixteens as an example. But today's event is held at a venue called Arbor at the Port. And the reason why it's called Arbor at the Port is because it's held inside an old ferry terminal building. So I'm here in Rochester, New York. Um, I'm about an hour from Buffalo, go Bills. And I'm right on Lake Ontario. So about hmm, 12, 15 years ago, we had a fast ferry boat and it's almost sort of like a mini cruise ship in a way. And what it would do is it would load up a bunch of people on it and it would go across Lake Ontario right to Toronto. And it took about, about three hours or so. And it lasted for a few years. And I'd say probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm not 100% correct on this, but I think it was probably about 10 years ago where uh, the city decided to sell it and just kind of get rid of it because it just you know the business wasn't really that good and it wasn't taking people across the, the lake as they had hoped and one of the things that people realize is that they could drive pretty much almost about the same uh, about the same amount of time so because I'm only an hour from Buffalo um, very very close to the Canadian border and if you were to drive um, once you get over the border it's, it's only about two two and a half hours depending on traffic to get from the border to Toronto um, and my wife and I, we actually go up to Toronto um, as much as we possibly can. We try to go right over the border to Niagara Falls on the Canadian side as much as we can. And uh, it's just a really, really good time. And we just, we absolutely love uh, Canada. So shout out to all of my northern neighbors up there in Canada. You guys are awesome. And uh, any Canadian DJs that are watching this, comment below and tell me where you are in Canada. Um, might be a new spot or a new location that I might want to check out one day. So anyways, this, this terminal building remained once they sold the Fast Ferry, and now it's home to a few different restaurants, and it's got this event venue called Arbor at the Port. And the owner of the venue actually has a couple other venues as well. Um, they're actually constructing a new uh, venue downtown Rochester, um, which will sort of have the same naming convention. It'll be Arbor at Midtown I believe and then they also have Arbor Loft uh, which is like a loft style venue not too far from here it's probably about 20 minutes or so from here um, and then they have another venue called the German House so uh, this venue it's pretty simple load-in uh, it's not too difficult it's just a, a little bit of a pulling the cart from the the truck to the inside but no steps nothing like that so it'll be easy load-in and uh, I'll get some shots of maybe the lake and you know kind of show you guys what's what's around here but this area is really cool I mean it's 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 Charlotte Beach so it's a really really big parking lot uh, during the warmer months you see a lot of people come down and they hang out there's a boardwalk there's a long pier that people can walk on uh, there's a live music uh, venue right across the parking lot uh, it also acts as a nightclub as well and um, yeah it's pretty cool a lot of people will bring their bikes down their motorcycles their nice cars uh, my wife and I come cruising down um, in our in, in, in the summer car here when we get the chance and yeah it's it's a pretty cool area and it brings a lot of people during the summer so 
but today we are a nice balmy let's see the truck says it's 28 degrees today so yeah whew, a little chilly but um we actually just got our first snow here in rochester our first measurable main type of snow uh the other day where we got probably about two two and a half inches so we haven't really gotten a whole lot if you've been watching the news buffalo new york got killed with like a hundred and i don't know 110 inches of snow or something like that so we're lucky here in rochester an hour away we've barely gotten any snow this year but anyway, sorry guys, I'm rambling. I'm going to unload the truck, get everything inside, and I'll see you guys in there, and then we'll start setting up, and I'll kind of go through the gear. Um, if you watched my last gig log, gig log number two, uh, really it's going to be the exact same setup, the exact same gear pretty much, uh, mainly because I just didn't really unpack anything. I just left everything from, from the way it was. So I'll just kind of run through it real quickly because you guys have seen it all, but uh, those of you who haven't seen uh, my last couple of gig logs, I'll just run through it, explain what equipment I use, why I use it, and uh, hopefully it'll be a fun time. The last couple of Sweet Sixteens that I did, there were more adults partying than kids, and I don't know if that'll be the case tonight, but I guess we'll see what happens. So uh, hang out, and uh, let's get the stuff inside, and I'll see you guys in the, the next part of the video. 20 minutes later. Okay guys, so I am now back inside. I just finished unloading the truck. And this is where I'm gonna be set up and you can see a whole bunch of my gear. So I got lucky with this little cart right here because I normally use a rock and roller cart. Um, I have an R10 and even with like all this gear, it still takes me usually a couple of trips to actually bring things in. But there was a florist that was taking stuff back out to their car and they had this venue cart and this thing is like huge, it's massive. And I was able to get everything in pretty much on one trip. So I got lucky and definitely saved a lot of time being able to use this, this venue cart that, that they have. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna do a quick 360 to kind of show you guys what this venue looks like. You can see they actually have some pretty cool uplighting built into the walls and uh, they want to do pink because obviously you know sweet 16 girls you gotta have pink and there's a curtain right here and on the other side of that curtain um, there's like the bar and it goes a little bit farther back and then the entrance to the actual venue but uh, yeah so this is really what it's gonna look like before uh, a bunch of people are actually in the back getting ready doing their makeup and just kind of getting things all set up um, over here is where birthday girl is actually going to be sitting they're setting up a backdrop she's got a throne chair um, we're going to have a photo and video booth right over here in this corner um, we've got you can see the sweet 16 really what it looks like when I said it was waterfront I wasn't kidding it is literally right up against the water I actually did a wedding last summer right across over there and uh, that's the Rochester Yacht Club and one of the aunts of the Sweet 16 girl uh, that's here tonight, it was her wedding. So uh, it's kind of sort of like a, a sequel or like a part two to her, her wedding because we're gonna be partying it up and just having a lot of fun. So this is the, the bay that kind of goes right into the main mouth of Lake Ontario. And the Coast Guard is over there and there's a whole bunch of different uh, boating places. And yeah, so it's a pretty cool area. You see I'm changed and everything is all set up I'm going to do just a real quick rundown of everything that I have for tonight's event um, but first what we'll do is I'll show you the photo booth and the setup the way we have it over here uh, too much not too much of a difference from like I said the last event that we did um, you can see actually so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the camera around so this is the prop table a lot of the same props that we had at the last event. Um, you can kind of just see a lot of fun stuff using the high tie printer and the inflatable booth. And I'm using Luma booth. 
So Luma booth, it's pretty good. Um, I use it for a lot of events. It's pretty popular with the 360 booth, um, and you know, because it's social. So tonight, people have their, uh, cha their uh, choice of photo, animated gift, or burst gift, or burst picture. Sometimes it's called different things. And a boomerang, and then video messages to the guest of honor. So that's the photo booth, guys. just kind of go around a little bit and show you guys uh, a couple of the kids are playing with the props as you can see and you see the DJ booth in the back um, but what I'll do is a quick little spin around you can see some of the uplighting uplights tonight are just like the last events using the uh, I'm sorry the Chave Freedom series and the both lighting the minis which are very similar to Rockville and even like some of the ape lights. I know some of you guys have commented and said both lighting is crap. It's Chinese junk. Why even bother with it? Honestly, guys, I really haven't had any problems with it. Um, I know DJ Rick Red, Rick Webb. He uses both lighting in most of his events, and he's never had a problem with it. And I know a few other guys too that have used them as well. So don't necessarily knock them. I know there's a lot of bad opinions in the industry about Chinese lighting and just Chinese gear in general. Sure, a lot of it is kind of junky, but um, you can actually find some really good stuff too. And both lighting, I feel, definitely feels in that, is definitely within that category of being pretty decent. Um, and then up on the wall, there's the monogram. It's kind of, it's really, really bright in this room, so unfortunately, can't really see it too well. Um, I'm using a different projector tonight, so that's one of the reasons um, why this one's a little bit dim. I wanted to try it out and see how it is in here, um, and then just seeing like how the monogram isn't as bright as, as the other projectors that I use. Uh, I probably won't really be using this one too much more, but um, when you get started, you'll be able to see it. It's pretty good. Um, and then walk around. We're expecting, I think, about 150, 130 people here tonight. So we've got the DJ booth, and then you can see we have 16 letters. And I'll take you behind the booth and kind of show you guys what equipment we are using for tonight. So again, RCF tops, those are the art series, best of the best. I'm using the Chave Flex Stands in limited edition white. Can't even get those things anymore. I'm um, using the Furman Power, the Rockville six panel facade, I'm using the Sure mic again. <laughs> um, I like to go back and forth between the Sure mics or the Sennheiser mics. Um, I have pretty good experience with all of them. The only bad experience I had with Sennheiser was their lav mics. For whatever reason, I, I just have terrible, terrible issues with those. And uh, I mean, you guys out there, you guys know Sennheiser is not cheap. It's pretty much top of the line. And I've just had all kinds of problems with them. But this sure mic, I've literally had no problems ever with it. It's kind of weird. If you guys are using Sennheiser mic out there and you're having issues with them as too, comment below, let us, let me know like what kind of problems you have. And if you have had problems and you were able to resolve them, let me know what you did because maybe it might be something that I'm doing wrong. I don't know. So we'll go behind the booth, show you guys for lighting. I am using the Eno Pocket Spot Twins with the color rail IRC. And you guys know that I am a very strong proponent of using wireless DMX. Well, this is a good reason why you should always have your checklist before you leave for an event. Um, I'll have a video coming up soon that talks about the checklist that I use for all of my events that kind of goes down all the gear and make sure I have everything loaded up in the truck and everything is good. There's no forgetful things, I'm not forgetting anything. Everything is good. Um, unfortunately, tonight, I actually walked out of my house and I left my wireless DMX dongle. So for DMX control, I'm going super old school and I'm doing a wired connection. But for wireless control, you can see I'm using my DMX Go uh, with the Amazon Fire tablet, little Behringer mic mixer for additional control for sound when people are doing their speeches. For turntables, I'm using Reloop's flagship, the RP8000, the Native Instruments Tractor Z2, the Korg Nanopad 2, Zeus gaming laptop, and Reloop headphones, 
and Odyssey case and I'm using my Yamaha sub as well and again the DXS 15 sub is actually really good because it's a bandpass design it's very boomy it's very loud and it throws sound pretty far um, especially if you're in a venue like this that has really long wood floors the sound carries really really well with that sub um, but don't get me wrong, that is absolutely no comparison to RCF and, and Bass Boss subs, uh, what I generally use. Uh, I just like using this because it's light, it's easy, it's quick, and it's very boomy. So there you go. And uh, I get a lot of questions about the Z2. And people ask, you know, are you using Tractor for your software? And to be honest, I actually use most of the main softwares that are out there. I use Recordbox, I use Serato, I use Virtual DJ, and I use Tractor. The thing about the Z2 is... It will work with Virtual DJ, it'll work with Tractor, obviously, it will work with Recordbox, and if you want it to work with Serato, you have to use a uh, sound card, much like the SSL boxes that are out there. But for me, what I use, I use the Denon DS2 sound, uh, sound card. And you can map the mixer to actually work with Serato without any issues. Um, so that's generally what I do, and then when I, I hide the sound card underneath one of the turntables, then everything works perfectly and flawlessly without any issues. Uh, just a quick rundown um, oh these triple beam lights behind me I think you guys may have seen in my last video those are the uh, Chauvet slim beams which are discontinued can't even get them anymore um, but if you find anybody who's out there selling them definitely grab them real quick because they go very very quickly they're pretty much like gold in the industry so there you go guys um, all the gear I'll put it all the information that I use uh, for equipment down in the description and if any of you guys get any questions about any of it let me know and I'll be glad to answer but um, it is now about almost three o'clock. We got an hour before a lot of people start showing up. I'm gonna walk around, get some pictures, and uh, we'll get this thing going soon. So hang out guys and enjoy the show. See ya.